Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. And we ease you into the week with the new Pat Gray bingo card, which by now is pinned to the top of the Twitter page, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. so all you have to do is when you, when you get bingo on this card, call, be the first to call. Uh, 888 and you win $30 and worth of merchandise. That Twitter handle is at Pat Unleashed, for those unfamiliar. Precisely. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so it starts in the upper left, left-hand left corner with uh, the sappy music going with the sad Aww. story. That's every day in America in 2022. Pretty much. Then we've got... Uh, what kind of freak? Huh. What kind of freak would do something like that? Oh! <laughs> Then uh, in the middle of the first top of the top row, uh, by all that is good, right, and holy, you got Jeffy saying, my man, whoever. Uh, then you have this. I love Chinese people mm-hmm. too, but come on. Mm-hmm. And then Keith saying, all right. Jeffy, how dare you? <laughs> uh, I will not be put on the defensive. I'm not going to be put on the defensive. Oh, yeah, okay. The, John Kerry. John Kerry. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. Leakages. A certain je ne sais quoi, if you will. That's what usually follows it. But it doesn't have to, because that's not what's oh. on the card. Uh, then Jeffy, don't say. That came from... Uh, the Florida Bill. Don't say yeah. gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, what's his name? But the guy... Per- Ron Perlman? Yes, Ron Perlman. Ugh. Parading and milling. That's almost a free square, because we show that all the time. All the time. Uh, and then I, I love the... Uh, I love the fine bomb. Uh, hey, Paul, how you doing? Thing. Let's uh, check in with Tom, who is up next. Uh, hello, Tom. <clears throat> hey, Paul, how you doing? Tom. <laughs> hey, Paul, how you doing? Tom. <laughs> hey, Paul, hey, Paul, how, how you doing? doing? Tom. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Tom. <laughs> They both just stuck to it. Yeah. They both just stuck to it. I wonder how that eventually ended up. Do we know? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Then we get the audible sniff. (laughs) Mean Streets of Helena. Oh, yeah. Puddin'. Uh, I heard it on the news. And I said it was ridiculous, man. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Keith says. Uh, That'd make a good band name. Jeffy. Squared up. Don't square up on me. (laughs) Bruh. Uh, Ariba, Ariba. Ariba, Ariba. Keith plays a tambourine. In a world. It's one of our, uh, I guess, uh, mocking things that we do from because of those commercials uh, from mocking, movies. Mocking, that's serious. Yeah, it is serious, right? <laughs> True. Uh, I could care less. <laughs> one of my pet peeves of all time. One of my biggest. When it shouldn't, when it should be, I couldn't uh, care less. Because if you could care less, that means you may, you may care a great deal. It's not as emphatic as no, it should be. it otherwise. is not. And then uh, Jen Psaki saying... I'll have to circle back on that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we'll be circling back on all of these. Mm. And when you hear them all and you, you got a bingo, then you, you call us as, as prescribed before. Uh, it's tax day today. Oh. And somebody tweeted out this cute little <laughs> meme with uh, Hunter Biden laying in bed with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> The IRS knows all about the $20 my friend paid me through Venmo for lunch, but the IRS doesn't have my laptop. The U.S. government can't figure out anything about Hunter Hunter Biden's millions of dollars from China, Russia, and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So happy tax day. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, A little late this year because it fell on Friday, and I guess they give you those extra two days. That was nice of them. Yeah, that's really sweet. I'm sure many people had to spend their Easter Sunday doing their taxes. Fill it out their taxes. Did you have a good Easter? I did. had a great Easter. I'm glad to hear that. The weather here was not bad at all. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It couldn't have been more perfect, could it? I mean, I love it. So nice. I love it when it's breezy and cloudy and you don't have the sun baking you. Upper 60s, low 70s. I mean, just so nice. Mm. Just so nice. Speaking of which... Had a little baseball get together last week between our two teams, uh, BYU and Nebraska. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a doubleheader on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, that's why yeah. there was... Uh, we played four. Because I was thinking, why BYU wouldn't play on a Sunday. No. So it didn't matter if it was going to snow or not up there. That's what I told you. I, you uh, apparently you? weren't paying attention. No, I don't listen to half of what yeah. you say. Okay. No. 
Uh, but the Cougars eventually took three out of four. Yeah, all one run. One every run one games. of them was a one run game. Yeah, I listened to a lot of that stuff. Yeah, man. I did too. There were some good. So it was, games. There were good games. I wish we could have seen. I want to see, <clears throat> and I know this is total inside baseball here, mm-hmm. literally. But I want to see the play the shortstop made for BYU to end that threat Nebraska had. I know, I do. Tr- would have won the game so effectively. Good. And like to hear the Husker announcers describe it, it was the greatest play of all time, and I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't either. Anyway, mm. would have been nice to be able to watch that, but it, I, was it worth forty bucks to watch? <laughs> no, thank nah, you. I don't think so. Sorry. Uh, so the first game was one nothing Nebraska. Then BYU won all, the next three three two. Seven six four three. Really good series. I mean, every really fun. game. Yeah, yeah, really tough. In every game that BYU won, they were down two to nothing at the beginning, mm. and came back to win. Leave it to <clears throat> a Keith team to blow a lead. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <clears throat> so that worked out really well. Yeah. Uh, all right. Got some audio here. Uh, Jen Saki was being interviewed late last week and was asked if her nem- nemesis Peter Ducey was a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> And okay. that's what she said. Before we go, yeah. I have to ask you a question. Okay. Because we have to talk about Peter Ducey for one second. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Weird. Is he a stupid son of a <laughs> or does he play a stupid son of a <laughs> Okay. Um, well. Pathetic. Um, he Pause it for a second. What gathering is this? Do you know? I don't know. It sounds. I don't know. I, I don't want to misspeak here. But yeah. It, it, it just. It so sounds like a, it sounds like a setup, like a stage setup that would be like a TED talk or something. But I yeah. do not think it's that. Something like that. Here's what she said. Network. Okay. That um, provides people with questions that nothing personal to any individual, including Peter Ducey, mm-hmm. but might make anyone sound like a stupid son of. A <laughs> so. Jeez, the Fox News thing is unbelievable. Like, they're the only ones who have any sort of slant on any of their news stories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I think that Peter Ducey would take umbrage to that because he comes up with his own questions. Yeah, Nobody's given him that I'm, at headquarters or whatever. Yeah. Boy, she's going to miss Peter. She is. Yep. Uh, hard to believe that anybody wanted her on their broadcast team. <laughs> we'll see how that does, though. Mm-hmm. You know? I can't imagine it going extremely well. You're not going to watch uh, maybe MSNBC more often now because Jen Sakio will be on there. You know all the what? Time? I don't anticipate doing that. No, hmm. I, I don't. I don't think so. Okay, but we'll see. Yeah, um, could be good stuff. Biden <clears throat> had an interesting thing to say over the weekend. Speaking of uh, of the administration here, he uh, he was talking about uh, I think building bridges and things. Uh, like literally or figuratively? No, fig- no, literally. Oh, the literally build back better bridge. bull crap that's building nothing. Yes, cool. there was that. We'll save that for for a minute. But he was also talking about the trees because, well, global warming. I believe oh. we cut down all our forests. We're doing fine. Guess what? What? We're part of the reason for the global warming. We c- did you hear that beginning? We cut down all our forests. Huh? <laughs> really? the stupid son of a bitch. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> stupid sons of bitches. <laughs> Forgot about that clip. Oh, you want to lay the fact on them? We cut down We cut down all our forests. We're all doing our fine. Forests. Guess We're what? Doing, what? We're part of the reason for the global warming. There are more trees right now than there were a hundred years ago. And there worldwide, there are th- over three trillion trees. There's more trees on Earth than stars in the sky. I just both, both so, of those are facts. Yeah, so it's it's such an uh, overstated problem that that you know we've cut down all our trees, we've cut down all our forests, even according according to him. Unbelievable! <laughs> the lies he continually tells over and over and over and over and over again. I thought we might just go through a, a few of them. I thought of about. I don't know, 20 or 22 over the weekend. Top of your head. Yeah, just off the top of my head. <laughs> I sat down and I thought, what are what are all the, you know, both egregious and, and the lesser lies, you know, but there have been a lot of lies. And then I started uh, scanning the internet a little bit to see if any of them were still up. 
And what you mostly find when you search for Biden lies are people talking about all the times Trump lied. Supposedly, CNN counted 3,000 sometimes <laughs> because they did, a, they did a story where they found a couple of his lies. And so they wanted to make excuses for him, and they did. And he'll never come close to his predecessor, of course, who lied over 3,000 times. Oh, really? gosh. Really? The most trusted name in news. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Yeah, nobody trusts uh, CNN, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Maybe I you'll trust it. CNN Plus, though. Give them a chance. Pat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that's doing really well, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember when he talked about being at the top of his class? He graduated at the very top of his class with three degrees. Ended up in the top half of my class. I graduated with three degrees. Ended up near the bottom of his class and won only one degree. And then the follow-up of the truth by <laughs> Sam Donaldson. <laughs> I love that. Damn. <clears throat> so not only was he not near the top of his class, he was at the bottom of his class and had only one degree, not three. Jeez. Then you've got the uh, professor lie, which he's been telling fairly recently. But, uh, um, you know, I, when I left the United States Senate, I became a professor at the University of Pennsylvania. Really? And um, mm-hmm. I've spent a lot of time, in, and the University of Delaware has the Biden School there as well. So I spent a lot of time on no. campus with college students. But it's no, not just- you really didn't. I mean, he had an honorary kind of position there. He never taught a single class. He didn't spend a lot of time. On campus. I think he visited like twice. God. Something like that. And made a million dollars for it. I mean, you just see this kind of stuff and it just makes you angry. Oh, oh yeah. This guy. Very. This guy. <laughs> and this guy <sighs> said initially he marched in the civil civil rights movement. All right. And then he said When I marched in the civil rights movement, right. I was not out marching. I was not down in <laughs> Selma. Oh. I was not anywhere else. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Strange? You yeah. bet. Then he lied about uh, being arrested with Nelson Mandela and then admitted he lied about being arrested with Nelson Mandela. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto. I guess I, I wasn't arrested. Because <laughs> somebody called him on it and said, uh, we've checked back through the records and you were never arrested. Yeah. I guess uh, I, I wasn't arrested. He lied about his dog biting the people who protect him, who put their lives on the line for him every single day, would take a bullet for him. And he actually blamed the victim and minimized the whole incident. They said it happened once because the a Secret Service agent surprised his dog, Major. Uh, that really pissed off the Secret Service agent. And he either tweeted or posted somewhere online that he didn't surprise that you know being in my spot where i'm supposed to be every single day did not su- surprise that dog and they described his injury as ah just a minor thing it's no big deal well it happened eight days in a row not to the same guy uh and the bite was called severe by everybody who saw it so i mean they can't tell the truth about anything including his stupid dog he continues to claim that americans couldn't buy cannons in the early days of our republic. Which, of course, they could. Even the Washington Post declared it false, gave him four Pinocchios. PolitiFact called it a lie. Uh, Slate and FactCheck.org all admitted it's a flat-out lie. <laughs> Just completely false. I mean, those are not exactly uh, conservative publications. Uh, he continues to tell us that gun makers can't be sued. They can. Uh, He says nothing is stopping the oil companies from drilling more, which is absolutely ludicrous. Hmm. You may not believe this, but oil companies uh, want to drill for oil. They do. It's kind of what they do, you know. And believe it or not, they understand the reality of what happens when the price of gas is this high. It's not actually good for them either. It's not good for us. It's not good for them. They know that. Uh, Because at a certain point, it's not only bad PR for them because they get blamed for it, but then people start cutting back and buying less of their product, which they don't like. (laughs) They they like it when people buy more of their product. So they like there to be a kind of a happy medium, kind of a, you know, not not 30 bucks a barrel, but certainly not 120 either. 
I think we have more on yeah, this. Yeah, we have an Don't update we? on that. <clears throat> yeah. We're going to give you an update on that coming up. <laughs> There's the absolutely silly Putin price hike bull crap that, oh, yeah. uh, that all the Democrats have agreed to babble every time they talk about inflation. Uh, Biden recently claimed, this is great. Oh, no. I, I didn't. I didn't know this until, I don't know, uh, last week sometime. He claimed his house burned down and his wife barely escaped. About this bridge, as I said earlier, he's a 10-mile detour just to get to the other side. Mm. And I know, haven't had a house burned down with my wife in it. She got out safely, God willing. God willing. <laughs> then there's the weird God willing thing at the end. It's already happened. What do you mean? <laughs> it, it already took place, this Joe. This guy sucks. <laughs> Apparently, God was willing. So, uh-huh. uh, yeah, he had a minor kitchen fire. His house did not burn down. It was, I don't know, t- a tiny little fire that they put out easily, and and there was not extensive damage, let God. alone burning down. God willing. God willing. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> who could forget the Amtrak conductor story? Over and over. <clears throat> With Angelo, you know yeah. Angie, whatever he called him. <laughs> In Biden's seventh year as VP, supposedly, Ange uh, told him he had traveled 100 million miles on the train or whatever. I don't know. Maybe it was 2 billion miles. It was a lot. (laughs) And what is the problem with that? Well, just that Angelo had retired 15 years prior to when this supposedly happened. And he was actually dead when this conversation supposedly occurred. Oh, boy. So, kind of a lie. Uh, he has said he's traveled. This is just to show his, uh, f- you know, his chops, the foreign diplomacy that he has because he knows all these leaders and he's hung with these mm, leaders. Mm-hmm. He said he's traveled 17,000 miles with Xi Jinping. Uh, no. Wait. Wait, maybe he did travel 17,000 <laughs> miles yes. on Amtrak. Yes. <laughs> he and Xi Jinping were just enjoying train rides together back and forth from Washington to Delaware. But they never, t- they never talk about business, yeah. though. Because no. he would never right. do that with <laughs> anybody. Right. <laughs> How about the bizarre claims he made, too, that Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir invited him to meet with her during the Six-Day War in 1967? Uh, I, I love this one. I have known every... Every prime minister well since Golda Meir, including Golda Meir. And during the Six Day War, I had an opportunity to, uh, uh-huh. she invited me to come over because I was going to be the liaison between mm. she and the Egyptians about the Suez and so on and so forth. Really? Huh. So in 1967, when the Six Day War occurred, Golda Meir called up a private U.S. citizen who was 24 years old and said, hey, Joe, huh. uh, I know you're in law school, but can you take some time off and come over and be my liaison to Egypt right now? Because we're in some important negotiations with our biggest enemy. All right. Who's pranking me? <laughs> who is this for real? No, it's really gold in my ear. Huh? No, it really is, Joe. How'd you, how'd you get this number? Uh, a bird, a little birdie gave it to me. Bird? Yeah, it's weird. Isn't that weird? No joke? No joke. No joke. <laughs> he claims he was a liaison between Golda Meir and the Egyptians when he was 24 years old and not elected to any office. Huh. Strange. Weird lie. Uh, but he has he has made that lie multiple times. He claims he was offered a job by an Idaho lumber company. Again, that's not a huge thing, but why? Why are you why do you make up these lies? I, I think it's just to connect with whatever audience is in front of him. And he thinks, well, I'm, I can relate to them by telling them, um, I, I was offered a job by an Idaho lumber company, <laughs> but then they realized I was probably too strong and would show up the other lumberjacks. Oh, right. Yeah. Huh. So, they, so I didn't work for him. I said no. He claims he used to drive an 18-wheeler. He said he visited Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue, remember this, after the massacre there. Mm-hmm. The rabbi says, uh, no, no, he was never here. 
Not only did he claim that the Afghanistan pullout was an enormous success, he also claimed that all his generals were with him in making the decisions he made. Again, nope. They sure weren't. He claimed to have never spoken with Hunter about all his business dealings. Obvious lie. He bragged that the NAACP has endorsed him every single time he's run for office. Which is fascinating because not only has the NAACP never endorsed him. Oh, wow. They've never endorsed anyone else. They don't do that. I mean, you know where they stand, but they don't endorse candidates. Uh, He lied about the Georgia and Texas voting laws, of course, multiple times. He lied about uh, Donald Trump. I don't know how many times he kept repeating the same lies that had been discredited over and over and over and over again, especially the Charlotte thing where he supposedly called the KKK members uh, good people. That's not what happened. But you talk about a liar in chief. This, This is just a tiny fraction of all the times he's lied he lies almost every time he speaks mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he either makes up some kind of story or uh brags about something he didn't really do just trying to ingratiate himself with people i think he's so desperate now he just i mean he'll say and do anything to raise that uh, 33 approval rating you're not nearly as smart as i thought you were <laughs> let me take a minute tell you about uh, real estate agents i trust If you're looking for a home, uh, you need a realtor who can help you find the right neighborhood, you know, the right schools. Are there kids in the area that are around the age of your kids? All of those kinds of things require a a realtor who knows the area and has a great marketing plan, has been doing this for a really long time, and they can help you through that process. And if you're selling your home, they can advise you on all the really important things like whether to repaint or replace countertops, remodel a little bit, because that could be an expensive proposition. And you need a realtor who's going to know whether or not you'll get your money out of any kind of fixing up you do. Real estate agents I trust. Uh, Fans of the show, you're going to have a lot in common with them. Uh, You can, as the name implies, really trust these agents. Realestateagentsitrust.com. You're listening to Pat Gray Unleashed. You believe how frightened the left is over Elon Musk potentially buying Twitter? <laughs> My gosh, they're out of their minds with this. And at every point, they are trying to warn people how dangerous it would be if Elon Musk purchases Twitter. First of all, he'll open that up to free speech. We can't have free speech running wild in this country. (laughs) Contra? Uh, Twitter is trying to thwart Elon's takeover attempt with a poison pill, a financial device that companies have been wielding against unwelcome suitors for decades. So what exactly is a poison pill? The ingredients of each poison pill vary, but... They're all designed to give corporate boards an option to flood the market with so much newly created stock that a takeover becomes prohibitively expensive. Mm. Strategy was popularized back in the 80s when publicly held companies were being stalked by corporate raiders like Carl Icahn. Now, more frequently, it's described as activist investors. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They're just activist investors. That's all. Twitter didn't disclose the details of its poison pill Friday, but said it would provide more information in a forthcoming filing with the SEC, which the company delayed because public markets were closed on Friday. It was Good Friday. The San Francisco company's uh, plan will be triggered if a shareholder accumulates a stake of 15% or more. (laughs) Musk, of course, currently holds eh, about 9%. It's interesting that Twitter would be so... Uh, opposed to this. They'd all make money Mm -hmm. on this. They'd make a lot of money on it. It shows that their motivation is ideological. It does. And not financial. Yeah, it does. Uh, So they are freaking out about this. And uh, Mika was discussing it on Morning Cup of Postum with Joe and his main squeeze. Uh, Remember when they used to keep that secret? (laughs) 
They're openly married now, of course, uh-huh. but they used to pretend like, oh, no, there's nothing here. We're just colleagues. <laughs> nothing here. Nothing to see here. Move along. Uh, so she said, uh, she said what should maybe be and usually is the quiet part out loud. Yeah, let's keep this on your inside voice, Mika. <laughs> you can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you... job. Mm. Well, wait, we, what? There's a longer version of that. Yeah, let's play the longer version because it, it provides a little context. And everybody we were Trump voters mm-hmm. and are still Trump supporters. They go, yeah, you guys are going crazy. He's doing what are you so surprised about? He's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. Well, and I think that the dangerous you know, edges here are that he's mm-hmm. trying to undermine the media, oh. trying to make up his own facts. No, he's and not. it could be that while unemployment and uh, the, the economy worsens, mm-hmm. he could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you, job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Controlling what people think is their job. That's what they believe. Wow. Uh, she just said a mouthful there that I don't think... Most people would appreciate would appreciate her saying, shh, shh, "Shh, Mika, yes, that's what we do. That is our job, but don't say it. Don't tell them what our job is. They think our job is to just report the news." Shh. <laughs> Katie Tour at MSNBC was also freaking out. Oh no, uh, she's hideous. Um, but. She uh, was upset over Elon Musk trying to uh, buy Twitter. And so during a segment with tech journalist Kara Fisher about the coming Armageddon, if Musk is successful to buy, in buying Twitter, uh, Tour played the hysteria card right off the bat. She said there are real and devastating consequences for using that platform to lie. And we've seen it happen. Hmm. Uh, he just wants both sides to be heard. And who decides if if things people are saying are a lie or not? Katie Tour, do, do we have to run everything through her? Get her approval, and then maybe you can post whatever it is on your mind on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this business insider. Uh, I, I love the uh, Twitter account, Defiant L's, that always finds these hypocritical posts. Business insider in 2013... When Jeff Bezos was buying the Washington Post, tweeted out, Billionaire Jeff Bezos' Washington Post buy marks a fascinating cultural transition in America. Business Insider last week. Elon Musk's attempt to buy Twitter represents a chilling new threat. Billionaire trolls taking over social media. That is unbelievable. 180 degree opposite take than when Bezos was buying a newspaper. And and again, there's no self-awareness. There's no, you know, if you're going to do that, if you are going to do a complete 180 on a topic, what you need to do, I think, to have any sort of credibility is at least say, say something like, you know, I, I said back in 2014 that, uh, you know, this was an exciting proposition with Jeff Bezos. Uh, but, you know, as I have grown and matured and I have seen the writings of Elon Musk and where he stands on issues, I have to say, I... I now feel like this is... They don't even do that. Mm-mm. No, no. And Be- they just assume nobody's going to catch them on this or call them out. And God, crazy. thankfully there are watchdogs out there that, that catch this Thankfully, stuff. yeah. Uh, we'll tell you about one of those watchdogs, the media watchdog at CNN. Uh, have you heard about Brian Stelter's situation? I have not. All yeah. right. Seems to be some rumors swirling around. We'll see about that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. I uh-huh. can't wait. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. We'll tell you about that coming up on uh, Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray is here. Some tweets here. Uh, Jimmy Dimples tweets, maybe Biden thinks we cut down all the trees for the paper to print the dollar bills inflating the economy. It's possible. Yeah. Uh, DMXDM tweets, Biden has been plagiarizing so many aspects of his life for so many decades. It's likely he has no idea what's real about his own life. That could be. Very possible. Mm-hmm. 
From Carl Smith. Okay, Pat, maybe Joe has lied about driving a truck, being a lumberjack, being buddies with gold in my ear, riding millions of miles on Amtrak and more. But at least he's completely truthful when he says, I keep forgetting I'm president. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. From Vern Lundquist. Anyone that's spun an extensive web of lies over their 130-year career like Biden <laughs> is likely to end up with dementia, with uh, dementia-like symptoms, just trying to keep them all straight. Indeed. By the way, anybody notice the coverage of the subway shooter? Pretty much disappeared. Did you see any of it over the weekend? Oh, or this morning? I've seen nothing about it. Seems like, uh, you know, shooting... Was it 10 people? Yeah. And uh, setting off smoke bombs and injuring 29. Uh, that's a bigger story than a, a day or two. Hmm. But especially in New York City, where the reporters that cover this stuff think the world revolves around. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but since it doesn't involve a white supremacist, apparently, uh, they're just not interested. Hmm. And I love the fact, <laughs> I love the fact that he turned himself in essentially called the uh he called the hotline the crime stoppers hotline and said hi uh this is frank you guys are looking for me yeah my phone's about to die <laughs> <laughs> they hadn't pinged it before then i Apparently mean not is that not <clears throat> i don't understand i don't either it's so easy to find people nowadays i mean how do how does a guy shoot up a subway, and then just casually walk out of the subway and disappear. You you don't... Again, we've talked about the surveillance in New York. It's unbelievable. What was it? 12... Was it 2,000 cameras two, per square per mile? Per square mile. Yeah. Yeah. That's That seems like a lot. Seems like you should be able to... Sufficient to find a guy. And they knew who it was. And they knew who it was. I mean, right. So, okay. <laughs> now we... get now. Okay. We know who it is. Mm-hmm. See if there's uh see if he owns a cell phone. No, what are, what is the luck that, that that our guy would own a cell phone that we could ping? <laughs> right. What are the chances? Oh, nobody owns cell phones. It's, right. So don't even you know what? Remote. Don't even run that name through the database. We're, right. We'll, we'll go and uh, let's go and talk to the <laughs> to the people on the street. Maybe they get us some clues, some hot leads. So you got that shooting that just disappeared. Uh, over the weekend, there was a South Carolina mall shooter. Shot, uh, he injured 14 people. Nobody was killed in this one either, thank heaven. Mm -hmm. But uh, he does this mass shooting, gets caught, put in jail on Saturday. Makes bail on Sunday. He's out. (laughs) So. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. So okay. So, That's definitely sniff worthy. I would. Yeah, say. Yeah, I would say so. So there's been multiple shootings too. Yeah. All weekend long, there's been yeah. a lot of shootings since this uh, gun control announcement by Joe Biden. <laughs> I will say this though: at least the judge ordered him not to go back to the mall. Oh well, then you're so, fine. So yeah, yeah. Th- everybody's safe. He can't go back to the mall, and that's the only place he could do any harm. You know that. I'm going to go out on a limb here. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Okay, you made bail, but don't you dare go back to that mall. I'm going to guess that the mall was a gun-free zone. I'm going to guess <laughs> that the subway, probably hell, the entire city of New York yeah. it's is a gun-free, a gun-free, zone. gun-free zone. Right. So how does this kind of stuff happen I, there? I wish I knew. That's I just so can't amazing. Follow. And then Houston so had amazing. one outside a mall there. Oh, it was outside Let's the get... Galleria, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nobody killed in that one either. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just uh, at least one person. Were there multiple people shot? I just saw the one. I think it's just one guy. Yeah. A fight over a hamburger or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was in front of... It in probably and was. Yeah. Who I knows? mean, they fight for a lot less than that. Mm-hmm. And people get killed for less than that. Just unreal. But, yeah, fortunately, this guy's out on bail. Um, but you don't have to worry. Again, he's not going back to the mall <laughs> there in South Carolina. Okay. So yeah, if you shop at the Columbiana Center Mall in Columbia, South Carolina, okay. you're, you're fine. You, well, you're fine from that guy. From that guy, yeah. Somebody else could go to that mall and uh, do nefarious things. But, and let's hope not. But not the shooter from Saturday because the judge told him not to. Mm-hmm. And if there's one thing <laughs> yeah. he's all about, and that's abiding by the law. 
<clears throat> I mean, once in a while, there's a breakdown. <sighs> well, maybe he's going to be a stickler that he can't start shooting people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Come Pretty on, bitchy. man. Come on, man. <sighs> what a world. <laughs> what Every a world. day, it's like, what? How is it possible? He's out on, I think it was only 25, yeah, it was $25,000 bond. And, oh, Oh, wait, He's also more. required to wear an ankle monitor. See? Okay, so. You, you left that out. I did. I did. But now I'm inserting it. So wait. So everything's fine. He's got the ankle monitor. He can't go back to the mall. So I'm sure he can't shoot anybody. So wait a minute. Is the ankle <clears throat> monitor so that he can't leave his house? Then isn't the mall just kind of the cherry on top? Because wouldn't it go off if he just leaves his house? Well, it doesn't say how far he can go. It, do, it doesn't. That's not in the story. If he has to, like he's under house arrest, I don't. Okay. He, they probably just want to make sure he doesn't leave town or the state because then that would be, you know, now he's trying to flee. Are they able to track uh, him if if that ankle monitor goes off? Because I know in New yes, York City. Yes, because this isn't New York. Right, because there so they, they can't even track right. cell phones. <laughs> right. Maybe South Carolina can track <laughs> ankle monitors. What? Somehow they have the tech in South Carolina, but they, they didn't have it not in New, New York. York. No. No, we don't. Isn't that strange? Uh-huh. Hmm. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Uh we were we we're telling you during the lies about uh, Biden's nonsense that ah the oil companies we've given them the go ahead on everything. They can do whatever they want. They can drill in, in people's backyards if they want to. <laughs> go for it, man. Please. If it if I get I offer some, mine up. If right. it will help. Yeah. If I get some of that, if I get Go a ahead cut. and put an oil derrick right in my backyard. Seriously. I'm not I'm not playing. I got earthquake insurance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so are you willing to let them frack on your land? Oh, too? yeah. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. All right. Mm-hmm. The, the I would like a little slice of it, though. Just a little slice of, you know, since it is my property. Mm-hmm. And maybe you can give me, I don't know, a 10% share of the uh, oil you find. And certainly under those, you can go ahead and frack as well. Well, that's the thing here, actually, Pat, Mm -hmm. is that the story you're about to read, (laughs) it's frustrating in so many senses, but uh, one of them is that the federal government is changing the royalty rate that they're charging oil companies. It's going Hmm. from 12% to 18.75%. So the federal government is getting an even larger cut. So they're basically saying, sure, you can drill, but you're going to be paying us. You know, huh. Tons more now. Well, yeah, the Department of Interior announced Friday they will resume the sale of oil and gas leases on federal land beginning next week. Whoa! Yeah. Huh. Why would you do that? <laughs> I thought everything was fine and they could already do whatever they wanted to. <laughs> so why would you have to do this? BLM will begin issuing final environmental assessments and sale notices today for future oil and gas projects and will offer for lease approximately 173 parcels on roughly 144,000 acres, an 80% reduction from the acreage originally <laughs> nominated. In other words, yeah, we're, we're, we'll give you some spots. What? We're only giving you 20%. 20% of what they wanted. But I thought you just said, Joe Biden said they could do whatever they want. <laughs> I did say that. So, so, But I also said he's a lion sack of crap. Right. So remember, they put a moratorium in on wow. drilling on federal lands one week into his presidency. Yeah. They're finally realizing how terrible their policies are. Mm -hmm. They open up lands, one-fifth of what the oil companies have asked for. It's just incredible. And they've jacked up the royalty rate, too, so the federal government gets a bigger cut. The move comes as Biden faces gas price hikes and soaring inflation, each of which could prove politically catastrophic. Biden had said during the campaign that he wanted to end such leases Mm -hmm. and put a moratorium on them. Uh, He did that the first day of his presidency. Isn't that wonderful? (sighs) Within his first week in office, Biden signed an executive order to temporarily suspend new oil and gas leases on public lands and offshore water for drilling and fracking. (laughs) And then he turns around and makes it seem like Mm -hmm. I gave them everything they wanted and they're just not doing anything. Okay. Wow. It's. It, I mean, it's progress, right? It, yeah. It, it is some progress. Yeah. But... I mean, he has to do something, right? He has to do something. Otherwise, it's going to be a bigger bloodbath it, and it, <clears throat> in, in November. And I think they understand that. Uh, all right. Let me tell you about 
<clears throat> start mail. Because free email services like Gmail and Yahoo aren't really free. You pay with your privacy. In fact, the internet giants like Big Tech bank on exploiting your data and they sell it to the highest bidder. Your business plan? Uh, Google has it. Medical records? Yahoo can sell them to drug companies. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's why I really love Start Mail. It is fantastic. It keeps my email private, period. Every email can be encrypted, even if the recipient doesn't use encryption. When you delete an email in Start Mail, it's gone forever. Whereas with Microsoft Outlook, you delete something and uh, it's still there. Or on Google, you delete it and it's still there somehow. It's on a server somewhere. Yep. Not with Start Mail. Start Mail uses their own servers, not Amazon's, which means they can't be put out of business either, mm. uh, like Parler was for a while. Switching to Start Mail is seamless. You can easily transfer all your current email data so there's no starting from scratch. No reason not to do this. Start securing your email privacy with Start Mail. Sign up today to get 50% off your first year. Go to startmail.com slash unleashed. Start with a T. S-T-A-R-T mail.com slash unleashed to get 50% off your first year at startmail.com slash unleashed. Gray Unleashed. Welcome. Uh, California is revealing its plan to phase out new gas-powered cars by 2035. Stupid. Somebody had a stronger one than this, right? By 20, was it was by 2030? Washington State? Yeah, it was Washington. Mm-hmm. So the left is really cracking down on gas engine uh, vehicles. California made public an aggressive plan to mandate a steady increase in the sale of electric and zero e- zero emission vehicles. Now, you know how much they are. I mean, the cheapest, I don't know what the cheapest one is, but they're mostly around $50,000 and up. You could probably get one for $35,000, uh, you know, if some crappy, rundown, mm-hmm. icky little smart car you know icky yeah i don't like him i don't like him <laughs> if if you bump into it with your leg on the way to opening the car yeah uh it uh it smashes the entire front end we'll just be more coordinated right up to the windshield car and then you don't have an issue that's true you got to be careful so i mean that's reasonable right and you can't drive above 55 miles per hour well, or yeah. Else the side panels will just fly right <laughs> off, and you don't want that. It's when it starts shaking right. at 45, that's your <laughs> that's a problem. cue to slow down. Under the proposed rule issued by the California Air Resources Board, I love them, uh, the state will require 35% of new passenger vehicles sold in the state by 2026 <laughs> to be powered by batteries or hydrogen. What timeline do these people exist on? 2026? What world are they in? <laughs> That is unreal. Less than a decade later, the state expects 100% of all new car sales to be free of the fossil fuel emissions, chiefly responsible for warming the planet. If you haven't left California yet, what are you waiting for? It's a good question. I mean, you can't afford to live there. The restrictions on your freedom are just so egregious. I I don't know how you stand it. Taxes, oppression. I mean, it's a beautiful state. There's no question. There's a lot to do there. But is it worth it? No. I don't think so. It's it's the crazy chick who's so beautiful, but freaking insane. Yeah. That's California. And you might be able to stand, you know, one date with her, but you don't want to go date her again. <laughs> Not someone you can have a conversation with. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> Jeez. Good luck, y'all. California... Kenya, California's proposed rule puts into motion an executive order that Newsom signed in 2020 under the plan 35% of new cars and light trucks sold must uh, must be zero emissions st- starting in 2026, as yeah. I said. Uh-huh. That'll increase to 68% in 2030 <clears throat> and to 100% in 2035. The plan allows for 20% of new sales to be plug-in hybrids. 
Okay, so out of the 25% that have to be electric by 2026, 20% of those can be hybrid. Ooh. Okay. So that's that's no problem. You can easily do that, right? Okay, <laughs> so if, I, if I'm a car dealer right now in California, mm-hmm. I'm going to make a very public announcement that, look, there's a car shortage around the world, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, people, you go, you drive by lots. It, it's it's unbelievable. There's so there's about 10, 20% full of where it used to be packed to the gills with new cars. I'm telling you, you're a car dealer. You're a car dealer of size. You have a lot of dealerships there in California. Let's make an announcement that, look, I, I'm going to, I'm going to start selling cars other places. You know, there's, there's, there's need for inventory all around the country. I'm getting out of California. I can't do business here. And just make that announcement and see what changes at the old Sacramento State House. Yeah, I'm surprised that they haven't headed this off, in fact. You know, the big car dealers, why aren't they? Well, maybe they have been, and they just got it ignored. I don't know, but uh, California is atrocious. I don't know why or how people live there. Mm-hmm. When you're paying a, like a million dollars for a thousand square feet, that is ridiculous. And it's not even, you know, high end thousand square feet. Right. It's like just normal, everyday, your average house, 1,000 square feet. Yeah, just a million dollars. Don't worry about that. Yeah. The, uh, I'm sure you can swing that. The right? average home value there in California, 775,000. That is the middle average. of the road. Crazy. California. Stop. 888 933 More Pack Gray Unleashed coming up. Hope you had a great Easter. Uh, we had a fantastic Easter dinner last night. On Friday, we did something kind of different. We did a uh, Passover Seder hmm. with Jesus added to it because, you know, we're Christians. So, uh, really really amazing and meaningful it was really fun hopefully um uh you had a great time too we we did leave an open chair for isaiah just in case he showed up as is traditional and in fact isaiah did show up isaiah finkelstein the 16 year old neighbor came over and he sat in that chair for a while so i'm not sure if that's the isaiah they were looking for i don't i don't think so okay yeah but that's kind of cool though but again hope you had a great easter weekend because it and the weather <laughs> not everywhere was perfect <laughs> here yeah unfortunately <clears throat> in the northern climes oh, no. some of them uh there was another blizzard right mm-hmm. <laughs> it's still snowing on easter on easter yeah jeez darn global warming yeah and this is a late easter mm. you know this isn't like yes. a march easter right i looked this up uh easter can be anywhere from march 22nd to april 25th so this was a late one this year. Yeah, I forget what the circumstances are that have to be met. It has something to do with the full moon. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and what? something else. It has, yeah, there's a couple of things that have to happen, huh. and then it's the first Sunday after that. Okay. Yeah, so hmm. that's that's why there's a wide range there. Yeah. Uh, got some tweets here. One from Stephen Stoneman. Um, a mass shooter is freed on $25,000 bond. But nonviolent Trump supporters are still rotting in jail for trespassing. Yeah, but there was more than that, yeah, Stephen. Don't minimize you, this. Uh, please don't minimize the milling and parading. Thank please you. don't. I'm glad somebody threw in the word Thank milling. Thank you, Rob, for showing yeah. milling and parading. Mm-hmm. Mm. Again, I just <sighs> threw up in my mouth a little bit. And look at all those terrifying. people documenting terrifying. the egregiousness of this with yeah, their own yeah, yeah. cameras. With, with their cameras. And by the way, turn that camera right around on you, pal. Mm-hmm. Okay, because you're in there too. Yeah, I, I milling. Whenever I watch this video, I catch the blind guy uh, who's being led around by his friend. You know, <laughs> and it occurred to me this weekend, yeah. and I, I'm sorry for the non sequitur here, but follow me here. You know mm-hmm. how like all these signs, like stairwells and elevators, they have braille on it. Mm-hmm. Has anyone in your entire life ever seen a blind person <laughs> running their that. hand along the wall? I never have. See like. Oh, oh! Here's the elevator. Come on, <laughs> stop! What, what is that? It's got to be a Bill Clinton era, uh, uh, probably work OSHA thing or something. <laughs> Not Pavlov's dog tweets. Bill Gates buying up all the farmland is more of a concern than Elon Musk buying up all of Twitter. 
priorities. Mm-hmm. Rowdy introvert, maybe the Bureau of Land Management should sue the other BLM, Black Lives Matter, to get their acronym back. Not that either group really gives one the warm fuzzies. From JD on Cali's, California's uh, coming gas burner ban. Anybody want to invest in used car lots on the Nevada and Arizona state lines? That's what we said. How do you make a million bucks? Yeah. Because the first thing they did a couple years ago, remember, they said, hey, we're going to outlaw um, gas-powered engines on, on lawn equipment. <clears throat> And I remember yeah. us saying, oh, it's time to build a lawn equipment store on the border. No, it needs to be all things combustible engine. Build it right there on the border of California, and you will have mm. you will retire in two years, man. No kidding. Uh, we've been discussing how wind energy kills eagles and other birds. Well, somebody sent us this story from 2014 from the CBS affiliate in San Francisco. It's not just wind turbines, apparently. A Bay Area company was being urged to fix its state-of-the-art solar plant after thousands of birds flying by the plant were being burned to death. Ooh. Workers at a state-of-the-art solar plant in the Mojave Desert have a name for birds that fly through the plant's concentrated sun rays. Streamers for the smoke plume that comes from the birds that ignite in midair. No. Dang. What a way. That can't be pleasant. No. Federal wildlife investigators who visited the Bright Source Energy Plant last year, that would have been 2013, and watched as birds burned and fell, reported reporting an average of one streamer every two minutes. God. They're urging California officials to halt the operator's application to build a still bigger version. Uh, wow. That's why the government had to get involved and start making birds because they were all dying above <laughs> these solar plants. And the wind turbines. Don't forget about that. And the those. wind turbines. Yep. Yeah. The wind turbines. Yep. The investigators want the halt until the full extent of deaths can be assessed. Estimates per year now range from a low of about 1,000 by Bright Source to 28,000 by an expert for the Center for Biological Diversity Environmental Group. Birds bursting into flames, having their feathers singed oh. by. The intense heat generated at that solar plant. The deaths are alarming, he says. It's hard to say whether that's the location or the technology, but there needs to be some caution. And what was the 28,000 number you read referring to? That's how many birds had been okay, killed. Because I'm still trying to find the temperature here. I wonder how high. Yeah, I haven't seen the temp yet. Um, a $2.2 billion plant launched in February of that year is at Ivan Pa Dry Lake near the California-Nevada border. The operator says it's the world's biggest plant to employ so-called power towers. More than 300,000 mirrors, oh. each the size of a garage door. Oh, you can imagine then with the sun reflecting on those, yeah, they, how hot that must be. And just think what a magnifying glass does oh, to an ant. Oh, man. And now you got all this happening. Oh, gosh. So 300,000 mirrors. The size of gra- garage doors reflects solar rays onto three boiler towers, each looming up to 40 stories high. The water inside is heated to produce steam, which turns turbines that generate enough le- electricity for 140,000 homes. Well, that seems worth it. Yeah. Yeah. If a few birds have to die for that, so be it. Right? So be it. That's what I'm sure that's what the environmentalists think. Ah, whatever. At least it's the right kind of power. Jeez. If oil companies were causing oh, oh. birds to burst into flame. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> can you imagine the outcry, the outrage? You'd never hear the end of it. I can't, for the life of me, find what the temperature that is knocking these birds out of the sky and killing them instantly. I can't find what that is. It's so got to be really hot. Anybody has got that, please tag me at Keith Malinak on Twitter. Yeah, I'd love to know, because that sounds like it'd be really, really hot. Yeah, and it'd be uh, something for... you would see plastered all over the web, uh-huh. saying, "Yeah, help! Look, look, look what's happening." Hey, this has to stop. But see, again, it's the right kind of power, so they they don't care. Mm-hmm. They don't care. You've got one liberal policy going up against another, and so they ignore it. Yeah, just let it let it happen. Whatever, no big deal. <sighs> Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Sad, dude.
And yeah, and you think of what a painful, I mean, being bonked on the head by a wind turbine is one thing. Being burned to death, incinerated, <laughs> I just, you're just flying along on your average day looking for worms and uh, all of a sudden you fly over these mirrors and you burst into flame. Wow. And you, then you make that sound. Wow. Because uh, that does not feel good. No. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, Martin. Uh, Pope Francis has decried Westerners as racists sure. over Ukrainian refugee relief efforts. Hmm. <clears throat> so what he considers the Western world's rush to help Ukrainians fleeing the Russian invasion after failing to do so uh, on other occasions, I guess, is uh, and that's what's making us racist. Hmm. Have we not helped anybody else? Because it seems like we kind of have. But, yeah, it does. Uh, Italian reporter Lorena Bianchetti highlighted the responses to the Ukrainian and Syrian refugee crises and asked the pontiff if he saw cracks in the walls of indifference, of prejudice toward those who flee from other parts of the world wounded by war, or if refugees continue to be subdivided. Uh, and he said, refugees are subdivided. There's first class, second class, skin color. They come from a developed country or one that is not developed. We are racists. We are racists. And this is bad. Speak for yourself because um, we, I, I don't know of a crisis like this where there's been a massive refugee situation that we haven't helped out in. We are continually sending goods, supplies, food, provisions of all kinds to nations all over the world. What what is it that you want us to do? I guess we should be ignoring this completely and then and then we wouldn't be racist. Nah, it's just a bunch of white people being yeah, killed. Don't and, worry about it. And let's please note that this was such an egregious one country invading another one. It's a pretty Yeah. It has nothing to do with yeah. race. It's a pretty uh obvious example of injustice. Now, I don't know, ultimately, that uh, the leadership in Ukraine are good guys, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the innocent people in Ukraine yeah. who have fallen prey to this invasion, which, by the way, I did look up while you were reading there. I just wanted to see what all the uh, what the Pope and the Vatican were up to as far as uh, helping out uh, with refugees. Okay. Um, are they helping? Yeah, they, they actually did let in 12 refugees. From twelve twelve thousand? No, 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 no. Twelve? No, no, no. Million? No, 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 no. Pat? Huh? I said twelve. Tw they let tw in one, twelve. One dozen. There it is. People. One dozen people. Into into Vatican City from. Uh, huh. Well, so what happened was, um, huh. these Syrian refugees were hanging out on the Greek island of Lesbos, and <laughs> so this was in December. Mm -hmm. He lit the twelve. The twelve. Just mm -hmm. like the twelve okay. people, mm -hmm. twelve individuals, yeah. are now staying at the Vatican that that had been hanging out at Lesbos, and now they're at the Vatican City. <laughs> nice Syrian refugees. So oh, okay. look at there, he's uh, stepping up because you've he seen up, put his money where his mouth was. You, you've seen the the palatial uh, setup there mm -hmm. at the Vatican, <laughs> have, yeah. right? Yes. And so apparently they only have room for the twelve people. Okay. There. All right. So anyway, he's really stepping up. Well, we, we only allowed like 220,000 illegals into the country um, mm -hmm. last month. So, <clears throat> so what racist we are, right? We're mm -hmm. racists because mm -hmm. we only allowed 220,000 in a month. Yeah, but the Vatican lit in 12. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. He also decries our, our wall that we were building and aren't anymore. As he's sitting behind and speaking behind a 60-foot wall that surrounds the Vatican City. So. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. It was only 210,000, not 220. 210,000 illegal aliens arrested at the border in March. More than 80,000 of them were released into the country. <laughs> Yay! <clears throat> Yay! It's good, right? Arriba, arriba! That's good. <laughs> 
United States immigration authorities arrested nearly 210,000 illegal aliens attempting to sneak into the country through the southern border during the month of March. An additional 11,000 or so attempted to enter the country via legal ports, despite not having a visa or permission to be in the country. So that's still illegal and uh, brings it. That's why I was thinking 220,000 because mm-hmm. there's that figure. There you go. Fox News' Bill Malugan reported that 109,549 of those were expelled via Title 42, which is about to expire, of course, on May 23rd. The Department of Homeland Security just recently stated that when it rescinded, when it is rescinded, America should brace for as many as 18,000 migrants attempting to cross the border every day. Every day. 18,000. Per day. Okay. Yeah, and by the way, uh, we don't have the numbers on the last almost four months, but in the first uh, 11 months of the Joe Biden presidency, we know for a fact that 23 known or suspected terrorists were caught at the U.S. border. We don't know how many slipped through. No, that doesn't happen. But 23 were... Where where are you getting that nonsense? That's that's impossible because... uh, Terrorists don't sneak across the southern border. Hmm? Why would they? I'm reading it right here. It's a, <laughs> it's a Brett Bear yeah. tweet. Perhaps you've heard of Brett Bear. Yeah, Fox, uh, Fox News. News. Yeah, the 20th. liars. <laughs> Got me. Got me. <laughs> yeah, I did see that this morning. Too. Twenty-three terrorists. Twenty-three that we know. Known. Of. No, no, right, right. Terrorists. Right. That means that they have some sort of record that we <laughs> right. know about. Right. How many? Help. And forever, people have called that. You know, bogus, baloney. Uh, it's a lie. I uh, <sighs> help. <sighs> All right, let me tell you about Rough Greens. <laughs> yeah, this is something you can't control. You can make your dog's food better with this dog food supplement because the dry kibble dog food has all the nutrients burned out of it in the sterilization process, so that it lasts a long time. Well. Rough Greens restores all of the vitamins and minerals, probiotics, antioxidants your dog needs to be really happy and healthy. Uh, And they absolutely love the taste. It is good for them, yes, but they love it too, which is, uh, I think, a huge plus. My dog, Bell won't eat her food without it on top. Most dogs I hear about love it. The only exception were Keith's dumb dogs. Yeah, I know. Uh... Glenn's dogs obviously love it. Uh, Stu's dogs love it. And so, uh, Rough Greens wants to be able to make sure that your dog is going to love it before you really commit to buying a big bag of it. So you can get a free bag of Rough Greens for your dog to try out for a couple of days. You just take care of the shipping. Uh, Go to roughgreens.com, R-U-F-F Greens, roughgreens.com, or call 833-783-3364. Radio Network. Welcome. Great to have you with us. By the way, I think a few minutes ago I said that uh, we left a seat open at the Seder yeah. for Isaiah. Of course, I meant to say Elijah. Yeah. Thank you for pointing us out and uh, letting me know that I misspoke. And then I'm a little miffed at your neighbor boy. I am too, because his name is Isaiah. Isaiah and I was, Finkelbaum at, comes on, over there. On Friday, I was thinking, oh yeah, Isaiah, come on in. No, stupid. It's got to be Elijah. Oh, did he eat a lot? Did he? Yes. Okay, now the it's pig. not cool. Not cool at all. Not cool. And he knew he wasn't Elijah. He knew it. See, he pulled one over on you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, all right, we got some tweets here. Decaffeinated Texan tweets. Why so shocked a mass shooter made bail in 24 hours? Think like a lib. The guy isn't responsible for the shooting. The gun is. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From Flood 2000. The first Sunday after the first full moon following the spring equinox. Okay. Right. Okay. That's a lot to remember, though. The first Sunday after the first full moon following the spring equinox. I'm glad I'm not in charge of making calendars. So obviously it can't happen before March 20th, right? And so then you're just waiting. Well, when's the next full moon? Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, Hmm. that was recently. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> so the latest it can happen is April 25th, yeah. you said? Mm, March yeah. 22nd to April 25th. Okay. From Dan the Man, I'm pretty sure all of the people 
who were milling and parading were let go, but anybody lackadaisically sauntering, not so much. Oh, wow. The saunterers paid dearly. That's right. And are still in jail right now. Many of them. Uh, Joe McCullough tweets, uh, just make solar farms a no-fly zone. Duh. Yeah, then it's on the birds at that point. <laughs> then it's like, hey. Just post some, you know, signs how, for them. But when you do post a sign, though, for mm-hmm. birds, like how high is the regulation? they got to so be pretty tall. Because you got to make sure yeah. they see it. Yeah, right. You know? You do. Okay. <laughs> Uh, from Kathy, at the Seder, the chair is left open. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. that's just repeating what we'd already. Right, right. Isaiah Finkelbaum. Yeah. <laughs> showing up. It's Finkelstein. Is it really? I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe it should be Finkelbaum. Maybe it was Finkelbaumstein. I think it was oh, Finkelbaumstein. Okay. Okay. Isaiah Finkelbaumstein. Huh. So. Okay. Next time I'm going to know. I'm going to remember. No, <laughs> yeah. you're not fooling me this Not time. this year. Your name's not Isaiah. Isaiah. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, dude. You got a free meal on us last year. That ain't happening no. again. No, it is not. Uh, an Algerian man who <laughs> won 250,000 euros. Uh-huh. So that's about $270,000. Okay. Uh, on a $5 scratch card in Belgium, mm. is struggling to claim his winnings. Uh oh, what's up? You know why? Why? He's undocumented. Oh, no, bro. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. The prize is too large to be paid in cash, (laughs) they said, and the man does not have the papers he needs to open a bank account. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, no. A friend who tried to claim the money for for him was briefly detained on suspicion of theft. Uh The winner says he wants to use the money to build a life in Belgium. Hmm. When I get the money, I'm going to buy a place to live in Brussels and maybe a car, Hmm. he said. His identity hasn't been released. Uh oh. However, first he has to find a way to claim the money. Twenty-eight year old man has no valid identity papers nor a permanent place to live. Because he can't open a bank account, the lottery company will not make the payment, according to the man's lawyer. Hmm. We're looking for those documents that can prove his identity. He'll have to contact his family in Algeria. <laughs> lottery spokesperson did not specify which documents would be required to claim the win. Well, it's, I mean, that's why you might want to, I don't know, come to the country legally. Hmm. Just in case you win the lottery. Just in case, right? You want to be able to claim it. Well, that'll learn you. <laughs> wow. That sucks, Although it dude. hasn't learned him any manners. No, no. Apparently. No. So, that does suck. It does suck. Hey, last week, uh, Joy Be- Behar was sharing some of her absolute genius and stumbled <laughs> across something fairly interesting. That none of the other girls on the uh, at the table uh, jumped on. Oh, unique and perspective, huh? Right, unique perspective. Okay, Joy Behar. Here's uh, what Joy had to share with us. The Supreme Court is, is poised to pass a bill contradicting oh. the New York City so state laws. Oh, okay. So, so the Supreme Court now is working on bills uh, to counteract in New York City law, huh? So, I didn't realize we had transferred that particular power to the Supreme Court. That's why Joy is there every day, <laughs> well, so that she can alert us to these new changes in the United States uh, political system and to our Constitution. Okay, so in Joy's defense, mm-hmm. uh, there are activist courts yeah. that do That's make true. law. That is true. So the Supreme Court is, is poised to pass a bill contradicting the New York City state laws. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's just a, a, a just uh-huh. a basic understanding of <laughs> civics mm-hmm. um, might be helpful uh, if you're. Gonna... Do you think? You think if you're going to spew your nonsense every single day, I, doesn't that just show you how ignorant these leftists are and why they're so so agonizing? Because they don't know what they're talking about, and uh, shouldn't come as a surprise, I guess. Man. Plus, Joy, of course, is the most poorly named person on this planet. So, because she's rarely joyful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she did the have this. The court is, is poised to pass a bill contradicting the mm. New York City so state laws. <laughs> I hate when the U.S. Supreme Court passes bills that contradict anything. Or even support anything. Yeah, yeah. Because... Just seems wrong somehow to me. By the way, did you know Martin's real name is Cool? 
No. Yeah, it's kind of like joy, just like the opposite. Oh, I see. Huh. Pat oh. Gray. Only on the Blaze Radio Network. What a personal privilege. Yes. Pat Gray is here, and he's unleashed. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. Hello, and welcome to But Stupidity. With Joy Beha. The Supreme Court is, is poised to pass a bill contradicting the New York City state laws. That has been But Stupidity with Joy Beha. Hope you enjoyed that. Wait, there's a couple of things there. I, I just mm-hmm. caught a, a new one. And then that was uh, the New York City state laws. So not only is the Supreme <laughs> oh, Court right. not only I, play that oh again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Not only is that Supreme Court making laws. Oh, but, we, but, we, we, <laughs> yes, hello. <laughs> and welcome back to But Stupidity Part Two <laughs> with Joy Behar. The, the Supreme the Court is, is poised to pass a bill contradicting <laughs> the New York City state laws. <laughs> the New York City state laws. Uh okay, wait, what? So not only is the Supreme Court now passing bills, instead of ruling on bills' constitutionality and whatnot and so forth, uh, now they're, they're passing bills and uh, they're contradicting New York City state laws. A lot of issues here. That's a lot. I mean, this that's, is... That's too much, frankly. It's too much. She's really onto something right it's there. It's a mess. The Supreme Court making laws and the city making <laughs> state laws. <laughs> they just can't. We can't have it. So she... She broaches an important topic right there. In fact, two of them. We do, we just we took for granted her incredible genius, and uh, so thank you for noticing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, that's twice as good as we <laughs> thought it twice was. As good. Since we spoke last week, uh, Ukraine sunk a Russian ship, like one of the big ships, the Moskva. It's their flagship. Oh, nice. And uh, meanwhile, Russia is surrounding Mariupol. And they're bombarding Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, as uh, Russia begins to focus on the eastern side. Although they did launch a missile strike against um, one of the western cities, Lviv, Hmm. Lviv, and killed six civilians at least, wounded a whole bunch of others. They said they were were going after military targets there, but uh, Fox News was on the scene and it blew up like residential area and a like a tire store. I, I, I don't know if uh, Ukraine's using a lot of tires in the war and that's uh, that's preventing Russia from making the headway they want to make. I, I don't know. <laughs> Ukrainian President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky told CNN that Ukraine is not willing to give up, give up territory in the eastern part of the country to end the war with Russia and Ukraine's military mm. is prepared to fight Moscow's military in the Donbass region. In a battle, he says, could influence the course of the entire war. Hmm. Uh, the capital, Kiev, is also under constant uh, shelling yeah. right now uh, at this time. It shows no si- signs of winding up. down in any no, way. No, it there. doesn't. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> People were surprised, though, that this Neptune missile that apparently is Ukrainian's own. This isn't something they got from us. They they made this missile themselves, and two of their missiles sunk this Russian battleship, which is interesting because a lot of military experts said it should have been able to withstand uh, attacks like that. But it didn't. It didn't. Maybe it just hit it in the right area. I, I, I don't know, but uh, pretty impressive, the fight that Ukraine has put up. Pretty amazing. 888 uh, and a pat unleashed on Twitter. Let's go to Philip in Washington. Hey, Philip, you're on the blaze. Hey, fellas, you guys were covering that story about that uh, that power plant that was run by solar panels and all the dead birds. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I and then you said that you know if the oil companies were doing it. Well, I used to work in the oil field for ten years in North Dakota, and I was on a frack crew, and they have frack tanks and all kinds of equipment. Well, we've had birds that would nest on them. And as soon as they find out that there's a bird on something, you're no longer allowed to use it anymore. Oh, you're kidding. You a whole water tank. No, 
No, I'm dead serious. So you have a water <laughs> tank. You can't use it. Not only can Man. you not put water in it, you can't drain the water that's in it. Uh-huh. Once the job is over, they can't remove that water tank. So it sits there for months. And oh you got to understand, the people that are running this deal, they're paying to rent this water tank. Yeah. So they got to keep paying for this water tank while the bird's on it. We've had uh, man lifts that you need to use to get up to the, the wellhead, bird nest. Nope, <laughs> shut it down, wait for another crew to bring out. That's Another insane. That one. Oh my gosh! No, no, the best though, the best, the best one was a rattlesnake on location. Can't kill the rattlesnake though. You can't even remove the rattlesnake. They'd rather let you die from a rattlesnake bite than get rid of a rattlesnake. Now, wow. what's the one thing these all have in common? <laughs> None of these are endangered species. Right. This is like a meadowlark right. or a robin. It, it's not. A California condor or a bald mm-hmm. eagle nested. It's, it, it, they act like it was a Pegasus. Like, we can't move it. <laughs> we can't move it. Uh, uh, are those EPA regulations? They, they've got to be because uh, obviously the oil companies have to wow. follow it because if you Unreal. don't, I mean, we're all like, come on, nobody saw it. Just kick the nest in the ditch and let's go to work. Right. But no. Right. Because but they if won't. You, if you get caught, if you get caught, it's going to be ridiculous amounts of fines. Plus, they'll shut your job site down. down. So, again, it's it's ridiculous. And if you uh, were to yeah. do something like that, and if we would have known that, I mean, if we would have known the double standard, then we would have just killed the snake with a turbine and dropped a solar panel on it, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Philip, I have a quick question Jeez. for you, man. Um, you said you used to work yeah. in the uh, North Dakota oil fields. Do you have any idea yep. how much oil, or do they have any idea how much oil is still uh, available under North Dakota up there in that awesome, uh, is it the is that Bakken? It's a Bakken, yeah. Yeah, the ba- so I have a buddy that's still working up there. Here's the fun part. And basically, the boom is back because of the oil prices, hmm. but the oil companies haven't raised the rate. So everybody's got contracts. So you have a contract like, hey, we'll haul all your oil or all your water or your water and your oil for this much a barrel for the next X amount of time. The problem with that is now if you're hauling water for a dollar a barrel and it takes you, let's say, an hour and a half to do it, that's $160 for the round trip or whatever, for an hour and a half. The problem with that is now that the price of fuel has gone up so high, my buddy is dying because he is using more money on his fuel than it's worth to haul the water. So he's oh, almost hauling the water now right. for free. Unreal. And the oil companies are just going, well, hey, you got a contract. And oh. they won't raise the rate. Now, I work over the road now. That's I let, When COVID happened, it basically shut the oil field down, so I went over the road. Mm. My rates change as soon as the prices go up. Right. But the oil, But the oil companies won't raise their rates. Because they got them locked in. So mm-hmm. it's busy. There's all kinds of stuff to haul. But the other problem with that is the oil company knows that if you don't haul it or if you go, well, I'm not going to haul your water until you raise your price, they'll go, okay, then don't haul our water because there's a guy right next to you that's willing to basically cut his own throat to just have something to do. Right. Jeez. So they've pitted, Amazing. They've pitted these working class guys against each other. And that's, I mean, that's why my buddy has called me. He goes, hey, it's busy again. Are you going to come back? Nope. Mm. Yeah, that sucks. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Philip. Uh, these are things that you have no idea of. You, you never realize right. what these oil companies are going through. If a bird nests on their equipment, they can't move it. They can't use it while the bird is there. That's incredible. Meanwhile... Birds are spontaneously combusting above solar panels yeah. by the thousands and being killed by the millions by wind turbines. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Yeah, don't, that's totally fine. Don't worry about that. All these dead birds laying around the turbines, ah, it's yeah. just cost of doing business there. Yeah, the Blaze's own Tara, wow. Tara Price chimes in. She says, well, I mean, I guess it's reasonable to con- think that these solar panel farms are contributing to global warming then, right? Well, yeah. As they superheat the atmosphere so. above the plant. Jeez. Yeah, you'd think so, right? <sighs> Amazing. They probably have uh, some of the thermostats 
around there as well. So that that's where they're oh yeah the, the they're official weather the official station. temperature <laughs> is being monitored there at the Mojave <laughs> Desert after it's been superheated by the three hundred thousand solar panels. Yeah, wow, what a world. Uh, the Twitter account Clown World <laughs> documents our society's collapse. Yeah, they do. Over the weekend, they posted uh, this screenshot. <laughs> the question, can men menstruate? You're asking Google now. They're asking Google mm. this question. Having a period is not a feminine thing. And people of all genders menstruate. <laughs> what? Help us. Help us. I- including non-binary people, agender people, and even plenty of men. Show me one, let alone plenty. Right. Show me one. Menstruation doesn't change anything about your gender. It's just a thing some bodies do. <laughs> Clown uh, world. Clown world. Are you kidding me? This is a result in Google when you search. Uh, did you also notice yesterday, did you go to Google at all? Of course I did. I did. A, it's an Easter tradition for me. Nothing. Of course not. Nothing. Yeah. No Google doodle yeah. at all. Not even like spring bunnies no or anything. Bunnies, no bunnies, no Easter eggs, <laughs> yeah. nothing. Let alone, you know, Jesus, the savior mm-hmm. of the world, the universe, he's uh, not mentioned, of course. But what about a bunny or an egg? Nope. Could it be colored blue and yellow? You know, the beautiful spring Easter pastel colors? Nope. Mm. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. Singing eggs, you know, the pop out. I mean, they do these Googles all the time that are animated. Nope, nothing. You, you did mention uh, the blue wow. and the yellow in relation to, you know, Easter or spring type colors. Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to know when Fox and Friends changed their set colors to, to blue, blue and, yellow. and yellow. I've been noticing that literally the entire set. Th- it's a spring thing. I'm sure it oh, has I'm nothing sure. to do with Ukraine. Um, what's that now? It has nothing I'm to do sure. with what? I'm sure it has nothing to do with the flag of Ukraine. No. <laughs> no. It wouldn't be subtle propaganda no. during a war. No, it wouldn't. When did that no. change occur? Someone find out. I want to know. Because it's always been red, white, and blue. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, that's Fox's Not deal. Not blue and yellow. I want to know when huh. blue and yellow became the official colors splashed all over the set. When they do a, a tight zoom, you just see like the little half circle behind them or whatever, blue and yellow. Mm-hmm. But when they do the full set, man, it is everywhere. It looks like hmm. Ukraine. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. 888-900-3393. Um, speaking of... Not, not being able to tell who can menstruate. I mean, how do you know that? How are you, you don't know, you know that? Just some some bodies do that. <laughs> Spontaneous <laughs> menstruation. Yeah, I got I got men, women, right, non-binary, uh, gendered people, people with no gender at all can menstruate. I got news for you. Huh? The day I start menstruating <laughs> is the day I voluntarily <laughs> commit myself, and I ain't coming back. <laughs> Well, a transgender psychologist who has helped hundreds of teens transition has warned it has gone too far. What a hate monger. Mongering in hate. Mm-hmm. What a transphobe this person is. <laughs> uh, and fears many are making life-changing decisions because it's trendy yep. and pushed on social media. And this is a you think? trans doctor who has done these surgeries, right? Well, is that right? Well, he's a psychologist. Psych- oh, so, psycho- oh, okay, yeah. got it, got it, yep, yep, <clears throat> okay. Erica Anderson, 71, who is herself transgendered, okay. told the LA Times she's horrified that even 13-year-olds are now getting hormone treatment <sighs> without even meeting with a psychologist. I think it's gone too far, Anderson said, who until recently led the U.S. professional society at the forefront of the transgender care. For a while, we were all happy that society was becoming more accepting and more families than ever were embracing children that were gender variant. Now, it's gotten to the point where there are kids presenting at clinics whose parents say this just doesn't make sense. Anderson is so concerned, in fact, she said she's considering ending her own pioneering work, helping teens transition. I have these private thoughts. This has gone too far. It's going to get worse. I don't want any part of it. Uh, That's interesting. Thank you for maybe speaking some common sense. 
fair number of kids are getting into it because it's trendy, she, she told the Washington Post. I think in our haste to be supportive, we're missing that element. In her latest interview with the Times, to flatly say there couldn't be any social influence in formation of gender identity <clears throat> flies in the face of reality. Teenagers influence each other. That appears to have uh, been exacerbated by the pandemic, with children becoming more isolated and also learning more on networks and social media. Yeah. What happens when the perfect storm of social isolation, exponentially increased consumption of social media, the popularity of alternative identities affects the actual development of individual kids, she asked. We're sailing in uncharted seas. Uh, Yeah, I think you'd have to agree. That's obvious. Yeah. It just is. And it's frightening. It's frightening. And in a boat with a lot of holes in it. Yeah. In these uncharted seas. Yep. Uh, Podcaster Tim Poole had a great tweet last night. Oh, yeah. We should teach religion in public grade schools. Kids have questions, and teachers should be allowed to provide classroom instruction on religion. <laughs> teachers yes. should also tell the students to keep their religious studies secret. Yes! <laughs> That's brilliant. Yes! <laughs> that is a brilliant tweet. So good. And then they, you know what? And then uh, mm. we so can good. refer to critics of that uh, as the, well, don't say God, Bill. That's how we can label right. it like that, right? Yes. They don't want us to say God. I mean, I just want what? Right. Perfect. Perfect analogy. I love how he twisted that. That is awesome. Flip. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it shows you the the lunacy of what's going on right now cuz you can't you there's no way you could do that and it would be all right with the left. <laughs> uh so it kind of shows that things are out of control. My, how the turns table. A little bit out of control. Uh, all right. I got to tell you about uh, Patriot Mobile. Almost every day we hear about another major corporation that's gone woke, tormenting their employees with leftist propaganda funding organizations who seem to hate this country, traditional values in the Constitution. That's why I'm proud to support Patriot Mobile for years now. America's only Christian conservative cell phone provider. They offer the same nationwide coverage as the major car- carrier, so you get the same great service. So you don't have to give up quality for your values at all. And you don't have to go through a huge hassle. Patriot Mobile makes it easy to switch. They have plans to fit any budget, and they have a 100% U.S.-based customer support team, providing exceptional customer service. Patriot Mobile shares your values. They support organizations that are fighting for religious freedom, that uh, fight for constitutional rights, the sanctity of life, and our veteran and first responder heroes. So go to patriotmobile.com slash pat or call 972-PATRIOT. You will get free activation when you use the offer code PAT. Veterans and first responders save even more. So make that switch today. It's time we support companies that love America and share our values and shun the companies that don't. PatriotMobile.com slash Pat. PatriotMobile.com slash Pat or 972-PATRIOT. Pat Gray. Unleashed. Al Roker and his family are preparing for a major transition, and so he sought some advice from a wise, well, virtually perfect man, uh, Barack Obama. Oh. Yeah. Uh, to today's show, weatherman, his youngest child, Nick, is going off to college. And uh, since this will pave the way for Roker and his wife, uh, Deborah Roberts, to be empty nesters, He sought out advice on the topic from Barack Obama, which is great. Um, He sought out advice, you know, in public for other things as well, as you know. You pooped in your pants. I I pooped my pants. Yeah. So maybe you shouldn't poop in your pants at the White House. How about that? You pooped in your pants. I I pooped my pants. He pooped his pants. Oh, yeah. Oh. Again, what? You pooped in your pants. I I pooped my pants. He pooped his pants. Uh, Roker and Roberts are parents to two children, daughter Layla, 23, 
And son Nick, 19. He's the one going off to college. Uh, the weatherman also has a daughter from a previous marriage, Courtney, who's 25. Okay, so now they're going to be empty nesters because their youngest is leaving. So he went to Barack, you know, to get some sage advice from the smartest, most wonderful, perfect man in the world uh, today. Uh, he, the advice he gave him is, um, first tip, you're going to weep copiously when you drop Nick off at college, but copiously, you can't let him see you cry. So drop him off and then you quickly leave and then you cry in the car. Okay. Brilliant advice. Uh Really powerful there. Copiously. He also tackled the topic with a bit of humor saying, try to bribe them with nice trips so that they show up. Yeah, like going to Hawaii every weekend or uh, you're off to Europe or, Mm. you know, when you have, I don't know, $100 million that you just got uh, for no apparent reason. So relatable. Lives the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the beauty of it. Uh, He took a more serious turn, though, as he shared advice from his wife, Michelle, saying our job as parents is to teach our kids not to need us. It hurts. But when you see them as accomplished, confident, kind, thoughtful, responsible people, you've done your job. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. And don't poop your pants. And don't poop your pants. Right. He didn't. He did not throw that part in. Didn't throw that in. No, okay. he didn't. And of course, there's always this advice that uh, is classic advice. I've got two daughters, nine year old, <laughs> nine years old, and six years old. Right. I'm going to teach them first of all about values and morals. Uh huh. Okay. But. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If they but, make a mistake, yeah, right. I don't want them punished with, with a baby. baby. <laughs> I don't want them punished with uh, an STD at the age of sixteen. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so you just wipe it out. You know that's all you have to do. Just sweep it from your life. Uh, you can do anything you want, and I'll try to teach you good morals. But then if you screw up, we'll, <laughs> we'll just take away all the consequences we'll, from you. We'll don't com- worry about it. We'll compound the issue. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. Uh, also, he's about to nat- he's about to narrate a nature film. Oh, uh, you good. know that's that's going to be good. Oh, uh, uh, there's just- a Netflix nature <laughs> special coming featuring him as narrator. I think we have the trailer, right? Okay, good. Wild spaces are where we can connect with ourselves, our families, and something greater than us. Mm-hmm. This Monkeys. year, we'll all have a chance to experience them. Right? Up oh, close. otters. They're all greater than us. I guess. Narrated by Barack Obama. Ah, oh, look at this sweeping a Netflix documentary series. The wonders oh. and secrets of some of the most extraordinary Ooh. national parks extraordinary. on the planet. On the planet. <laughs> How many nature films use that shot of the whale? Right. Right. <laughs> Breaching the water and falling back in. And just when we think, you know, they can't ruin, <laughs> is there anything left for them to ruin? Yes, yes. nature. Yes, they will. <laughs> And yeah. you know that's going to be all about, yeah. all about climate change. And, you oh, know it is. Oh, of course it will be. And you know Obama's so into this. Look at this. I swear they drove him out into the middle of a park or just probably right on the edge there. Mm-hmm. He got out, did this opening sequence, and then that Went was home. it. Because look at his collar. He literally just threw that jacket on, jumped in front of a camera, yeah, <laughs> cut his lines like, I'm out of here. This might be the first nature film in history, though, not to use David Attenborough. Oh, yeah. So okay. at least we got that going for us. <laughs> they found someone else who can narrate a nature film. All right, we got overtime coming up, and then we'll see you again here tomorrow. Pat Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Network.